<laughs> Welcome to the next episode of Flix Fellas. I'm your host for today, Joey, and I'm joined by Kevin, who rudely missed last week. Yeah, and but someone's no James rudely this week. missing this week, so. Yeah, I think I'm the favorite fella now. So. <laughs> it was James for a while. He was the only one who hadn't missed. But yeah. What a bum he ass chose he is. his yeah. career and education over us. That <laughs> fool. Yeah, what an idiot. Like, this so. is going to be his career soon, so. Yeah. Fuck school. Yep. That's our lesson to Heard all the kids first. out there. <laughs> Fuck school. <laughs> Fuck school. <laughs> Stay in podcast, drop school. <laughs> That's it. Just start a podcast from your uh, from your second bedroom and yeah. never go to school ever again. Done. Done and done. Easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, today we are reviewing the 2020 Apple original film, On the Rocks, directed and written by Sofia Coppola, starring Bill Murray, Rashida Jones, and Marlon Wayans. And it's about a young mother who reconnects with her larger-than-life playboy father on an adventure through New York. Now, this is not the first time Sofia Coppola and Bill Murray have teamed up together. They also did Lost in Translation, which is a very similar vibe to this movie. I haven't seen it in years. It's been a very long time. But after realizing that she was a director, I was like, oh, it makes sense that the vibes are very similar in these two movies. But, Kev, actually, before we go over to you, I'm going to do a little quick shout out to join our fan page. You know, Mm. we have a Patreon up. It's as little as a dollar a month, um, $12 a year. I spent less on that than lunch today. So, or I spent more (laughs) on lunch today than that. So (laughs) I was just going to say, what'd you get for lunch? Like some rice? (laughs) (laughs) If you're interested in supporting the show, helping us get better quality uh, content and gear, please consider financially supporting. If not, just feel free to keep listening. That also helps. And, like and subscribe, share the show, do what you got to do. We appreciate it a lot, so thank you. Now, let's get into first reactions. Kev, what did you think of this one? Okay, so I've never seen Lost in Translation, so I can't back you up on that comparison. It sounds like it would be the same. But um, this movie stunk, but, like, wasn't the worst stinky we've ever <laughs> watched. Does that make sense? 100%. Like, I, <laughs> I felt so indifferent during this movie. I was just like... I'm going to bring back the word from season one. I was very whelmed during this movie. Um, I don't, I, Bill Murray is a treasure. Um, he was great. Love him. Marlon Wayans was really good, even though you don't see him too much in it. I don't think Rashida Jones was that great in it. Like, I don't think it was anything special. Is she even a good actress? Like, all I know her from is Parks and Rec and The Office. Like, is she good? Because from that, I would say no. So she's a very well-rounded actress, I'll say this. I know mm. she does a lot of directing, producing. Well, yeah, um, yeah. So Writing, writing, a lot of writing. Yeah, I don't mm. know if her acting is, like, top tier, technically, because mm. I feel like she does a lot of different types of projects. I do think she's good. I do th- know what you mean by this one. It was, like, kind of weird. Like, the way she reacts to things happening, um, we won't get into spoilers, but it yes. seems very counterintuitive yes. for a mother of two to react those ways. Yes, so, yes. I was a little confused by that, but um, I'll let you finish any more thoughts you have before I get No, I was going to say it was shot pretty well. Um, they're, they're, Apple TV Plus, we've watched two, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Apple TV Plus, whatever it is. Three. Three. We've watched Wasn't three. Cherry. Yes, on, Cherry yeah, was. Cherry, Swan Song, and now this. Yes. I forgot about Cherry. Um, Mm -hmm. that was a fucking long ass movie. They all look like they're shot on iPhones, but with like, like stage quality lighting. Does that make sense? Like there's something weird about the cinematography in these movies that I, it's a little off putting, right? (laughs) I never thought about that. But now that you say that, like looking back at Swan Song and this and like several other Apple TV movies that I've watched, it does have that feel that it's just like great quality, like Yes, it's iPhone like too technology, good. technology, yeah. but yeah, it's like not movie quality almost. Yes, yes. It, yeah. It's like something short, but it's super good. Like there's something super good about it. So I'd love to know how they shot that if I'm going crazy or we're actually onto something here and the Flix mm-hmm. fellas. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was kind of like a, like a wet piece of cardboard, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't heard that analogy yet. <laughs> yes, it was a wide piece but, of cardboard. 
I agree. I think maybe Apple uh, forces all their movies to use iPhones for to increase sales and promotions. Yeah, like but... sh- like their commercials, like shot on iPhone. They should have put that before the movie yeah. shot on iPhone. I. <sighs> I struggle with this one too because it's very overwhelming, like you said. It's there's nothing overly wrong with it, other than like the plot being kind of lackluster, boring. Yeah, I was expecting more to happen, more like something mm-hmm. because they set up a lot of hype for this marriage to have some issues, and then mm-hmm. again, no spoilers, so I'll save it. But mm-hmm. very overwhelming. I don't think that this is supposed to be looked at through the lens of husband and wife story more as father and daughter reconnecting Mm -hmm. even though it doesn't sound like they ever really disconnected so that's where i struggled with because i would thought that this was going to be more of a husband wife story and about halfway through you realize it's not but you're also never really led to believe that there's a reason for this father daughter to disconnect because even though this dad seemed to have been very What's the word to describe? Like, not absent, but selfish, almost? Yeah, selfish, yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of there was a lot of potential, I thought, with this one. But... Yeah, me too. Especially the cast. Mm-hmm. Like, they had a really good, like, there's only three people, but they had really good, like, solid characters to focus on. They, I just feel like they just didn't. Yeah. I also did think, though, that their, the chemistry between Marlon Wayans and Rashida Jones, his husband and wife, didn't really mm-hmm. mesh well. Like, maybe yeah. they just didn't do enough. Like, they show a couple scenes within the beginning of them, like, at their wedding day, and, like, being all cute and, like, swimming their stuff. But, like, instantly, all of that goes away. And yeah. And there's no real explanation for any of it. So, again, they set up a lot and just kind of fell flat, but... That's I thought, all I, have um, to say for I thought her and her and uh, Bill Murray had good, decent chemistry, though. Yeah, agreed. She Even seemed, though I didn't it, love she... her acting, they seemed to, they were believable as, like, father and daughter, and, like, like it seemed like they, they were able to build their history of, like, what their relationship was pretty well. Even though, like you said, they kind of hint at he was, like, a selfish, absent father, but it sounded, throughout the movie, until, no spoilers, closer to the end, like you think that they've just always had a hunky dory relationship, so so I think they thought did that well until they did it not well. <laughs> does that make sense? Like it does <laughs> until they kind of threw a wrench into it a little bit, and then it makes it a little different. But yeah. up until then, it I makes don't... sense for somebody who's watched the movie. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. you don't, you're probably like, "What the hell are you talking about?" What are but they talking about? <laughs> I think anybody who watches the movie would agree with that synopsis yes. because, yeah, like you said, that her acting wasn't over the top great. But yep. it is believable that she pl- she plays well into the role of a young girl who wants to like please her father, but also distance himself from his right. reckless ways, kind of thing. Yes, but I'll say this also for Sofia Coppola as a female director. It seemed very patriarchal. Like, yeah, it did. It didn't seem like it didn't really paint in my mind women in the best light in this one and like bandit painted in a horrible like kind of but yeah it just was yeah. a little weird i thought i, I didn't, agree i didn't know she directed this until the end and i yeah. thought the whole time i was like oh the, a male a man definitely directed this because it seemed like because like she the was top, the bad like, guy, misogynist kind of. yeah. yeah 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 so yeah that's let's... an interesting interesting point i didn't really think about but you're right it does it does kind of paint it as if she was just a cynical, or not cynical, but um, paranoid. Paranoid, yeah, exactly. And but it's she's not, and we'll get into that in the spoilers. Right, section. right, right. So let's take a break real quick, get a quick word from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> 